And hello guys and welcome back to another Pin Builder update. Woo! So we got some cool stuff to show you today. So I'm just gonna go ahead and jump right on into it. This is for update 3712. And by the time this video is posted, the update will be live. Okay, so the first thing I want to show you is the new duplication option that we've added. So we've been able to duplicate objects for a while now. If you create a an insert and you pick a color and all that fun stuff, and then you scale it in a certain way and you want to duplicate this, all you got to do is press Alt and D and it will duplicate that object. So now you'd have two. So that was there already, but what we've added is the ability to duplicate logic controllers. So I have two logic controllers, but I don't want them both. I just want this one. And as you can see, it is linked here as a sequential bonus multiplier to these four inserts. I selected this type because it has bonus multiplier values down here that will also get copied when it is duplicated. So everything you see here will get duplicated when you duplicate an object. So I'm going to select that and press Alt D. And now you'll see that I have another one here called name not set. And you'll see that it has all the same exact settings as this first one. And all you need to do is just whatever. I don't know why I named it T2, but that's what it is for now, so there you go. So that is the next item on our duplication list. So whatever settings you have set up for your logic controller, when you press Alt D, it will duplicate that plus all of its settings. So currently you can only duplicate logic controllers and inserts, but we're gonna continue to add more objects to that. Another thing that we have done here, um, you may notice over here, there's a new field called show point value. So if we select this thumper bumper and you'll notice that that went to zero, that's because there is no logic controller assigned to that. So if you have this attached to a logic controller, it will uh, utilize the lit point value or, um, of the logic controller. So, whoops, let's see if I add a logic controller here. So how we have a point value and point value when lit, when these are connected up, that point value when lit will display right there. Um, the last video that we posted actually shows how that works in more detail. But today I wanna to show you that we've added this option to turn that display on or off. So for any of these, if you want that number to show, it will show or not, depending on what you select here. And also new is this um, Williams style pop bumper cap. So that's the classic W. And then the classic B is this style cap, which you can see there. And that's the classic Bally type cap. And that's pretty much all we've got added here. We did do something so when these are lit, the inside body of the thumper is also lit up, which is nice. It looks it looks a lot better, I think, because those do get those do get a bit more lit. Um, all right, now so now while I'm showing you these things, let me show you something else that is important. So as you know, the name of each object is up here. This top. This top one is the name of your play field or your table or your machine or whatever you would like calling it. And then this light text there is the name of the object that you have selected. This is now an editable field. So if you wanna call this pop bumper over here, let's call it pop bump, oops, pop bumper, but I cannot spell. We'll call it pop bumper one, hit enter and now you don't have to hit enter, you can just select something else and the name of it will change. And that is shown here. So we've also added lights now, will show up in this lights drop down. And if you wanna rename lights, you can do the same thing there. So if I select that light bulb and I go here to light one, 
it'll go ahead and change. And now you can see it says light one there. Let's, let's get rid of those. Um, plastics decals are in here as well. And you can name any object that you can place on the play field. So, you know, I don't remember now if our object location option was in the last update or if that's new to this one. I believe that was in the last one, but just in case you missed it, you can set the position of an object by typing in numbers here and it will put it exactly where you want it. So if you want that at um, X100 and then this other one up here, you want it up there, but you want it also to be vertical above this other one, then you can actually just add the numbers right there. All right. I think you're going to really dig this next one. This was a user request. And let's just grab one of these guys and we'll put that there and we'll straighten it up. I'm going to grab a ball spawner and I'm going to put that up there. We'll put this down, way down below it. Okay, so you'll notice it says rubber bounce additive. I'm gonna set that to zero and save this. Now we're gonna go over here to play mode and I'm going to press B to spawn a ball. And you'll see that that's bouncing at the default rubber bounce factor. However, if you want it to bounce a lot more, just go here and change this bounce additive. I'm gonna put it at the max, we'll save it at 30. And then we will go to play mode and I'll hit B and we'll watch it bounce a lot higher. As you can tell, that's a whole lot higher. Now, if you really want it to bounce, you can actually put a higher value in there. Like let's say 500. And if we save that and go play, you'll see that it's really gonna bounce off there. <laughs> so that can be really bouncy and that is a per object bounce factor so you can set bounce factor for those and for these guys and for flippers now can have a bounce factor also so there's a lot of anything with rubber on it has the bounce additive um, added to it so that is exciting and new all right, another thing that I forgot to mention about these uh, these guys. Now, I don't I don't remember if I mentioned that I had. Um. Okay, so basically, what I'm trying to show you is that we've added some um, light to the body of the thumper bumpers so they look a little bit more realistic. And we've also added a blink rate option to these. So those can blink also. So if you want these to just blink when they're on, you can add a blink value right here. Uh, you can go pretty, pretty low with those and make them pretty fast. Uh, and these are basically for every second, you know, that'll, and if you don't want it to brink, blink, <laughs> if you don't want it to blink, just set it to zero and it will just be solid on when you turn it on. Okay, let's see. I want to show you, oh yeah. All right, so if you want to use a teleporter that's down here, and there's not already a ball spawner on the playfield, it will add one with it when it spawns it. So the way these work, if you're not familiar, is just like so. As long as you have a, at least one, um, it's not gonna make it because it's not close. It's bouncing right past it, that's funny. All right, let's put it up just as, oops. Haha, <laughs> let's put it up there and let's try that one more time. Oh, I know why it wasn't working. I didn't press play, that's why. So it will teleport the ball back to that ball spawner, right? But those don't work if there's no ball spawner to be had, right? But if we have, let's add a few ball spawners. 
I've added a bunch of ball spawners, so let's just add or move these around. I just clicked the ball spawner thing a bunch of times. And now what it's going to do is every time you press B or the ball lands in there, it's going to uh, randomly uh, choose one of these to spawn. So let's go take a look at that real fast. So you'll see now that it, it just appears at any of them. And now that that's holding over there, I'm going to press the B key a whole bunch of times so that you can see how balls will get randomly spawned. Alright, so that's just something I wanted to show you that basically a ball spawner will spawn when you add a teleporter if there are no ball spawners. I hope that makes sense. Okay, let's put those up there. Now I'm going to show you one more thing and I think you're going to like this. This is the big thing that we've added um, to this update. One of the bigger things I should say. So for rails, uh, this rail right here, this basic rail guide is now updated to allow for, well, one thing it has little posts or wires that keep it up off the off the place of play field surface but if we hold down the alt key and grab the ends the end grabbers you'll see that it's really stretching out so it will stretch as far as you want it to stretch in fact it will really stretch out if you want it to so and you can see it acts funky like like right there it's got some sharp corners and stuff well you can affect those now too in a new way which i will show you right now as after i get this let's put that there so one of the things that we've added to this rail system is the ability to rotate these grabbers. So if I switch to rotation mode, hold down the Alt key and grab that, it's going to rotate it. Now this one, you're not going to see much uh, happening, but for, let me, let me move this over here. And then I'm going to go back to rotate mode. And now I'm going to rotate this one. You'll see it, it widens it out. You can change the tangent angle and you can get a lot more smooth curves, uh, you know, just depending on which way you're going, where these are positioned, and whatnot. So you can get much nicer, smoother curves out of out of these rails now. And if this end looks kind of funny, you can also rotate that to kind of straighten it out, move it, get it wherever you want it. Now, of course, you don't want it like that, but that's fine. You can just rotate it around, or maybe you do want it like that. You could probably script out some text and stuff with those even if you wanted to. Um, but one of the things we're going to add to the next update for Rails is as you stretch it, it will add more control points. So you have even more control over these. So hang in there, and these will have more control, and we'll have much more complicated rail systems to add to the game after after that. Okay, so those are pretty much all the updates to the game, as it were. Um, at least for this version, this is a smaller update, but it has some pretty pretty good stuff in there. Want to let you know that one of the main things we've also been focusing on this past week has been integration with the Steam Workshop. I know you guys are really chomping at the bit for that, and we're working hard on getting that going. One of the f problems that we faced, though, is a little code-related... Um, well, it's not a problem. It's just an issue. Most of the... Steam Workshop stuff is very, very confusing. And and it's not just us that feel this way. It's it's well known in the industry that it, it's, it's a challenge. But we are going to make it happen. So please, please keep your, uh, well, please hang in there. <laughs> and uh, we're going to let you know how that goes. Add your comments and whatnot to the discussions, either in Facebook or on our Steam discussions. If there's some kind of 
playfield object that you would like to add or something that you want to see in the game soon that you feel like really needs to be in there, please let us know in those discussion areas. And until we meet again, uh, this is Anna, and go enjoy building some pinballs. Yay!